So as you can see in this example, we're turning our attention to some trig functions. All right, um, just studying the integrand, we see that secant squared is present. And one of the things you want to be thinking about is that um, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So that's likely going to be the way we're going to proceed. Just notice that um, tangent is in the denominator. So if uh, we let tangent be our u uh, and brought it up, it'd be u to the negative 1. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to uh, use the log rule for integration. Okay, so we're going to let u, the inside function, be tangent of x, and du, the derivative of tangent, is secant squared x dx. Okay. One thing that you might want to do is you might want to rewrite this integrand and bring up tangent. So it's quantity tangent x to the negative 1. The wrap parentheses off. It's not just on x, it's on the whole entire denominator times secant squared x dx. And maybe this is a better visual for you guys that you could see that this is u, the derivative of u is here, so this is going to be integrating um, using the log rule. So we're ready to go. So this would be u to the negative 1. You don't need to bring in anything. You have everything you need. du. Uh, I guess I'm going to go across here just to save some space. So we're ready to lose the integral symbol, the du. Natural log, absolute value, tangent of x plus c. A few of the problems that I want to assign on your homework look something like this. And the instructions are to find an antiderivative, to find a particular solution. And you're going to be given a, a point to do that, to find the c value, but really I just want to focus on, okay, well, how do I find the antiderivative? Well, notice that we don't have the integral symbol. All right, so what we did in a previous lesson is uh, we isolated dy. We got it by itself. We brought over the dx. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's separate the variables here. Let's keep dy, the y term on the left-hand side of the equation, and I'm going to have 1 over x ln x dx. Uh, you could put that differential in the numerator. You can stack it if you want to, or you can leave it out just like this. All right, once we have differentials on both sides of the equation, you might remember, well, okay, you know what? Now it's time to bring in the integral symbol. So I have everything I need, the correct notation. Okay, well, the antiderivative for 1 in terms of y goes back to y. So with this format right here, what ends up happening is, is you, get, you get the notation y equals. Unlike when you have an integral symbol, um, we just end up with, with the, the function itself or the answer itself. Okay, here it's just a little more polished. So I'm going to assign a few problems like this, and the instructions are to find the particular solution. And just to remind you, to find a solution to a differential equation means you're going back to the original function. All right, so separate the variables, bring in the integral symbol, integrate both sides. Okay, so this is going to take some time on our behalf to kind of study to see how we might need to proceed. All right, so kind of lingering right here and trying to get our plan together about what we're going to do. Uh, I could rewrite this as 1 over x times 1 over ln x. Mm, that's not going to really help me, though, because I don't have a property for integrals for multiplication. So I guess at this point I'm going to take uh, the denominator and move it to the numerator. Let's see if I can kind of then look at it and go, hmm, now I think I see what I can do. All right, so I'm going to bring up x to the negative 1 and quantity natural log of x to the negative 1 dx. All right, so it looks like, looks like I'm actually making it more complicated, but um, let's kind of put our mind around what, what's going here. Uh, maybe it would help if we rearrange some things. Let's just rearrange these factors. Ah, it's a negative 1. All right, if we were going to use u substitution, it looks like this is the inside function here. And uh, if u is natural log of x, then the derivative is 1 over x. And 1 over x rewritten out of a fraction is this right here. So this one's kind of strange. I think I see this as a u substitution with u being natural log of x. du is 1 over x dx, but again, remember this is actually just x to the negative 1 dx. 
which is this right here. So kind of strange. All right, let's proceed. Bring down y equals integral u to the negative 1. And all of this will be replaced with, right here, is accounted for in our du. So look at, look at the, the answer and how strange it looks. The antiderivative, using the log rule now, is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Well, u was natural log of x. It's like a nested function here. It's kind of strange, a little uncomfortable, but that's it. Okay, let's uh, look at integrating tangent of x. Okay, this might seem a little strange to have this trig function here. Okay, but thinking about it for just a minute, very first thing I do is I just consider tangent of x. Do any of the six trig function do any of the six trig functions have tangent x as their as its derivative? Nope, none of the six trig functions can be differentiated and result in tangent of x. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work. And you might be thinking, well, I don't have a fraction. Why is this problem even here? Because in all the problems that we've done previous to now, we've had a fraction which required us bringing the denominator up and using the log rule. Well, let's think about tangent for just a minute. It rewrites as sine over cosine. So here's our fraction. How do we integrate sine x over cosine x? Well, probably going to be the log rule. So we have to figure out, okay, well, what's u going to be? Okay, so when I look at this, I'm thinking u should be cosine. Uh, and cosine's derivative is negative sine, no problem, I can bring in a negative sign. So that's how we're going to proceed with this. Um, if you're thinking that, let me kind of take a little detour here for a second. If you're thinking that, well, why don't we let u be sine? That'd be fine, u could be sine, but the derivative of sine is cosine, and this actually is 1 over cosine. I don't want cosine in the denominator if I'm going to let u be sine. So I can't go that way with u allowing u to be the numerator, I'm going to have to allow u to be the denominator. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could first of all rewrite and maybe this visual kind of helps you see the u substitution that's necessary. So u is going to be cosine x, the derivative is going to be negative sine x dx, which means I need to bring in a negative and take out a negative. So let's change over to the u integral. So I've got the negative u to the negative 1. All of this is du, and we're good to go. Negative natural log of cosine x plus c. All right, before leaving this problem and looking at another one, again, just to kind of revisit the first couple examples we did, uh, reminding you that you could um, take the coefficient and make it an exponent. And I think on this one, it, it might be good for us to revisit that. All right, so this is certainly totally acceptable. But I want you to think about some changes when we move the negative here, the negative 1, if you will, to the exponent position. Okay. So it would look like this. Natural log absolute value cosine x to the negative 1 plus c. All right, well, this negative 1 now acts as a reciprocal situation. So this is acceptable, this is acceptable, but also think about the effect of negative 1, the reciprocal feature, okay, here. So what happens is, okay, um, if I reciprocate cosine, I'm going to get um, 1 over uh, secant. So kind of looking at what we have right here in the middle, okay, in between the bars, I can change that to 1 over secant of x, absolute value, um, and still with the negative 1 plus c. So we've really kind of got a, a, a double reciprocal here, if you will, um, bringing the negative 1 up. Okay, I just really realized that, or, you know, realized that cosine can be rewritten as 1 over secant, but I still have the negative 1 here, because all I've done is just rewritten it with a reciprocal. So what does this negative now then do? Well, it just reciprocates this fraction, which makes it secant x plus c. 
plus C. So I guess I really just want to uh, draw your attention to this answer and this answer. Okay. When we integrated by hand, we had a negative natural log of absolute value of cosine, but when you uh, manipulate the negative 1 here with the log properties, you end up with that being equal to the positive ln of secant, the positive of the reciprocal of cosine. And sometimes you'll see both of these formulas in textbooks, and I just want to point those out to you. It's kind of an interesting problem. All right, for the last example here, uh, we're going to revisit finding the average value of f of x equals tangent x on 0 to pi over 4. All right, so just kind of revisiting that topic, finding the average value, you might want to be thinking about, okay, what does that formula look like? Well, it's 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function. Okay, so kind of put, you know, that formula right before you. When you see those words average value, just go ahead and immediately write down the formula, and then we'll just customize it to what we need. All right, so I know this is a and this is b. So I've got to find the area from a to b under tangent, and then I have to divide it by this distance so I get the height of the rectangle. So just to remind you about average value, it's the height of the rectangle uh, that has the same area in it as what's under the curve of tangent x from 0 to pi over 4. So let's customize this formula. I think I'm just going to write across. I think I'm running out of paper, so to speak. So 1 over pi over 4 minus 0, integral 0 to pi over 4, tangent x dx. All right, so something a little bit different than what we've done previous here is that now we're, we're talking about definite integrals, integrals with limits, so we don't need the plus c. We're actually going to find a numeric value and uh, multiply it by uh, 1 over pi over 4 minus 0. Okay, so let's do a little cleanup. I'm going to work on this. Uh, pi over 4 as reciprocal is 4 over pi, so that's a constant multiplier of the integral 0 pi over 4 tangent of x. All right, had I not found the antiderivative previous up here in this problem, I would have to go through all the motions of doing what I did up here. Uh, but because I've already done that work up here, I'm going to come down here and say, all right, I've got 4 over pi times the antiderivative of tangent of x, which doesn't matter which one you're going to use. I'm just going to stick with cosine, negative ln absolute value cosine x and absolute value. I'm not going to put the plus c because I have limits and I'm going to put 0 and pi over 4. So we're going to use the FTC, the fundamental theorem, and evaluate the antiderivative at these limits. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the negative here just to uncomplicate my work in the FTC. So I've got negative 4 over pi times, and I'm just going to insert these two um, limits in for x. All right, so the negatives outside, so I have the natural log of cosine of pi over 4. So natural log, absolute value, cosine pi over 4. Uh, minus, plug in 0. So now this is minus as part of the FTC. Uh, that minus is outside. Natural log, absolute value, cosine of 0. Okay, so negative 4 over pi. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Uh, cosine of pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2. So we're going to have natural log square root of 2 over 2. Notice I dropped the absolute value. Uh, cosine of pi over 4 is already positive, so the absolute value uh, is not even necessary. So natural log square root of 2 over 2. All right, and back here, cosine of 0 is 1. So all of this goes to 1, and if you think about it, natural log of 1 is 0. So this is actually just minus 0. So here's my answer. As ugly as it is, it is my answer. Okay, I guess you could clean it up, rewrite it, but um, at this point I'm thinking um, there's not really <laughs> you know, any other kind of cleanup. It's just a rearrangement, so I think I'm just going to leave my answer just like this. So this last problem just has us use our new school, new, new rule, our new skill of finding antiderivatives using the log rule, um, but also putting it back into an average value question 
and then also the fundamental theorem question as well. So hope you found these examples helpful.